Hello everyone, we will continue the topic exception class and in the previous video, we created a exception class and we have two messages into the exception class and every message has a exception ID or you can understand unique ID. Now with the same name, whatever is the name of your exception ID, we have a attribute in the attributes tab. The type of the attribute is constant. And yes, we all know what is constant attribute whose values is fixed throughout the execution of the program. So that fixed value of that attribute is your message text or exception text, which I showed you in the previous video also that it is visible like this, but ultimately it is our message text or exception text, which we want to display. Now, what I will do, I will create a program and in that program, I will use this particular exception class depends upon the scenarios. We will display these particular messages or we can say exception text or message text. So I will go to SC38 transaction code. I will give some name to the program. Suppose I will give ZPRG, suppose demo on exception class. In this particular program, we will use our exception class. I will go for create. Suppose I will give that title demo on exception class. I will choose the type as executable program and I will go for save. I will save it as a local object. I will go for activate. Now what I will do, I will take a parameter into this program. Suppose we will go for single order number and I will use our order header table. You can take any table. It is totally your wish. If you do not have order header table available, you can take VBAK table, Mara table. There is no problem at all. So suppose I will take parameters. P underscore ORD. Suppose type. I will pass the data element of order number. This is our order header table. Suppose this is the data element of order number. Now I will simply pass the selection text. Go to text elements and I will go for selection text. Now we all know we will always, always validate the input with the help of add selection screen event. You all know what is the purpose of add selection screen event. The purpose of this event is to validate the input. So what I will do, firstly, I will go for this particular message. Firstly, what I will do, if user is passing the wrong order number, I will simply, simply display this particular message. Then we will go for second also. So firstly, I will go for this. Now, I will simply write add selection screen. Now, what we will do, we will simply, simply go for now previous understanding, try and catch block. What is the purpose of try block? Try block is used to raise the exception and catch block will be used to handle the exception. If I will give wrong order number, 
we will simply simply raise the exception and we will go for this particular thing whenever we will give the wrong order number yes we will raise the exception and yes whenever the exception will raise we will simply simply handle the exception now what i will do i will firstly write try and catch block and what you need to do just you need to write try if you will put tab sap will automatically give you try and try and we have catch you just put try if suppose if i will put try sometimes people will simply put try and after that put tab so sap will automatically give you try and try and catch now i will simply simply write a select query based upon this particular input yes i will fetch the data from order header table what is the order header table if i will get the size sub rc not equal to 0 i will simply simply raise the exception and whenever the exception will raise we will handle the exception now just think many times we i already covered this part i have a single order number because i am passing input a single order number whenever this input will go to order header table i will always always get a single order number yes i will always get a the details of a single order number i will always get a single record now it is totally your wish how you want to write the query you want to select the data and put into internal table it's totally your wish now we know we are getting a single record so we can directly put into work area also because we all know work area always always store single record and we know based upon this order number i will get a single single record so i can take individual variables also suppose i will take individual variables suppose i will write data lv underscore o date time data element of order date suppose i will go for lv underscore payment time data element of payment mode i will go for you can create a structure and you can directly go for internal table work area also it's totally your wish suppose i am saying lv underscore total amount type data element of total amount now i will go for currency lv underscore curr type data element of currency now what i will do i will simply fetch that data select now we all know we are always getting a single record so i will write select single select single order date payment mode total amount currency from we are fetching from which particular table order header table and i will put into these four variables into i will put those four variables lv underscore o date lv underscore payment mode lv underscore total amount and lv underscore currency so i fetched from order header table and i put into these four variables now i will put a where condition what is the where condition where order number is equal to p underscore o r d now if this query is giving the size sub r c not equal to zero it means we are going for a wrong input so i will simply write if 
psi sub r c not equal to zero. Now we will do everything with the help of exception class now. Now whenever psi sub r c is not equal to zero, we will raise the exception. Now how to raise the exception? There is no need to remember the syntax also. You can simply, simply go to pattern. You can go to ABAP object patterns. You can go to raise exception and pass the name of the exception class. This is the name of the exception class. Now I will go for it. Now you can see the syntax also. What is the syntax to raise the exception? Raise exception type and name of the exception class. This is the name of the exception class. Now next important thing. Now this particular class has so many messages, so many exception ID and exception text. As of now we gave two, yes. But in real project, we have so many messages into this particular exception class. We want to go for this particular message. We want to go for this particular exception ID. We, this we simply raised, raise exception type name of the exception class. In this exception class, we want to go for this exception ID. Yes, as of now, because by default, we are always getting a exception ID with the same name as that of class. It might be the case. I want to go for this exception ID. Now the question comes, how, how I can go for this exception ID? Just see here itself. Are you able to see a parameter text ID? Text ID means we have to go for exception ID. Now the question comes, how, how I will pass this exception ID, which has this exception text or message text. Now the knowledge will come by a vital role. It's the same name with the same name. We have a attribute here, attribute here. Can I pass the, this attribute? Yes, this attribute is a constant, which has this particular value. This word, what is the meaning of this value? Meaning of this value means it is our message text. So how, how we will pass this particular attribute, particular attribute? You all know, if you have a instance attribute, you are passing single arrow and greater than key. If you have a static attribute, you are going for equal to and greater than key. If we have constant also, it is treating as same way we are passing the static attribute. So we will go for equal to and greater than. So how I will pass? This is our class. And I will simply, simply pass the attribute. People always confused here. They think we are passing two times class name. No. This is your class name and we are passing the attribute, attribute. People think we pass the name of the exception ID, exception ID. You cannot pass exception ID. Yes, you can only, only pass the attribute. That's why SAP created the same to same attribute with your exception ID name and yes, and this particular attribute is a constant which has this particular value, this particular value. And it is a part of your text ID. Text ID, you can understand. This is just like our exception ID name. But we cannot pass exception ID. We are passing the attribute. Now, I will simply, simply comment this particular catch. And now I will check the syntax and we will cover one of the most important part again, which we put focused at the starting level itself. Have you seen? I raised the exception, but we have not handled the exception. 
and SAP gave a simple warning message. SAP gave a warning message also. See, I have not run the program. I simply check the syntax. Syntax check means what? We did the compilation check. And during compilation also, SAP is giving the SAP is giving a warning that you have not caught the exception. During the starting itself, I told you whenever we will go for CX underscore static check, it is check both the compiler and the runtime. Compiler means syntax check itself. Our code is getting compiled and at that time itself, SAP is saying you have not caught the exception. Whenever we will run the exception, yes, 100% we will get a runtime error because we raised the exception and we have not handled. But during compilation time also, SAP is saying that you have not handled the exception. This is the main, main advantage of CX underscore static check that you will get the error while going for compilation check. I will not say error, it's a warning. And whenever you will run, ultimately it will throw you runtime error. If the class is CX underscore dynamic check, I will show you in the future. We will not get this kind of warning because that is only only checked at the runtime. CX static check is doing the checking at the compilation time also. So what is the summary of this particular video? We cover so many important points. I created a program. I took a parameter. We are going for validation. So I called add selection screen event. Now we will make use of try and catch block. Try block will be used to raise the exception and catch block will be used to handle the exception. So I put a query <coughs> based upon our input. If size of RC not equal to zero, we are raising the exception. There's no need to remember the syntax. If you are remembering, you can write raise exception type name of the class. So I simply call through the pattern button. You can go for a BAP object patterns and pass the name of the exception class. Now the question comes, you have passed the full class name, raise exception type name of the class. But out of that, we want to go for this particular exception ID. How, how you will pass this particular exception ID? We all know SAP is creating a corresponding attribute. So we will pass the attribute, attribute. Attribute is of type constant and which has the particular exception text or message text. So how we will pass that particular attribute name of the class equal to greater than and name of the attribute. Now, whenever we will go for another exception at that time, we will simply, simply use this particular message class and we will pass this particular attribute. Now in the next video, we will see how to catch this particular exception and then we will proceed further in the program. So that's it in this video. Thank you.